this Wrestle Talk news, was Cody Rhodes guaranteed a championship win at WrestleMania? A Jay White WWE update and a huge match has been set for AEW Revolution. So subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk. Mania season is upon us, and as the fingers of WWE start to crank signwards, fans are left speculating about what will happen during the two-night extravaganza. Now, one of the more obvious matches and most speculated over outcomes is Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns, which Dave Meltzer has noted will take place on night two of WrestleMania and not on night one, just in case you were hoping for shenanigans with Sami Zayn. As a viewer, it feels like WWE are putting all of the pieces in place for Cody to be the one to topple the head of the table and walk away as the undisputed Universal Champion. It seems so obvious that people are speculating that it must have been something guaranteed to Rhodes when he signed up with WWE last year. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer also quashed the claims that Cody had been promised a championship win at WrestleMania, saying that WWE made no such commitment to Rhodes and there was no guarantee in his contract for that. Doesn't mean it's not happening though, does it? There's a slim chance that Cody won't be facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania because one Sami Zayn is set to challenge the Tribal Chief this weekend at Elimination Chamber. Now ahead of the event, Zayn was speaking to Sportsnet Canada about the match and also his friendship and long-term working relationship with Kevin Owens. Zayn said that while the Bloodline saga has been epic and full of riveting twists and turns, involving KO was something that required some delicate deployment. He said that Kevin's involvement was a point of contention as far as how much and when. Especially with me and Kevin because we're hypersensitive to the fact that we've done so much together. We're delicate about how we're used together because we don't want fans to ever get sick of this. He said, even though these are two guys I've seen together across the room from each other literally thousands of times and you still get them excited, that's very, very, very hard to do. Now, SmackDown may reveal more answers about exactly what role Owens is going to play in the Elimination Chamber event and the Bloodline story, but it, it's it's all happening in Canada, isn't it? So I do, I would expect to see him. I, I, he's probably going to be. Meanwhile, Zayn goes up against Roman Reigns, who surpassed a huge milestone as Universal Champion, reigning for 900 days as of yesterday. So 901 right now. Reigns put up a celebratory tweet saying, I told you that this would happen 900 days ago. A nice guy. Before we crack on with the rest of the episode, we just need to thank the Machine Gun Alex Anderson for their support on Patreon. Moving on to some AEW news now, and we're getting off to a truly positive start as Mark Briscoe is now officially All Elite. So yeah, while Mark and his late brother Jay were reportedly previously outlawed from the company due to Warner Bros. Discovery stance on historical comments made by Jay in 2013, now thankfully, after a hugely successful and emotional debut match against Jay Lethal three weeks ago, as well as a match on Dynamite this week, Mark has been officially welcomed into the AEW fold by Tony Khan, who tweeted, Mark Briscoe will continue with us in AEW and remains in Ring of Honor. It was great having him on hashtag AEW Dynamite tonight. I'm excited for Mark to participate in the debut debut of the new Ring of Honor TV. This is great news and it is great for Mark to finally receive the chance to showcase his abilities to a worldwide network audience going forward. Now while this week's Dynamite fell a little bit flat in the ratings and reception from some, there was at least one step towards something exciting coming at the Revolution pay-per-view. Because during the Elite's backstage segment where they were shooting some hoops, the feed was momentarily hijacked by an image of the House of Black, seemingly suggesting that they're next in line for the trio's championships. This was then later confirmed to in fact be the plan by Dave Meltzer on the the latest Wrestling Observer Radio. Interestingly, just a week ago, it was reported that it was going to be the Elite versus the Blackpool Combat Club at Revolution. I talked about it. I said it. However, clearly that wasn't the case. All those plans have now changed. Wrestling. While the Elite will first have to go through the flippy floppy bunch in Top Flight and AR Fox on this week's Rampage, you can expect the seed to be planted for House of Black very soon after that. And speaking of Revolution, while much of the card seems up in the air at present, one match that seems likely to happen is Ricky Starks versus Chris Jericho, or some variation of that involving the Jericho Appreciation Society. However, while Jericho is currently inundated with new friends, it seems like lately he may be feeling a bit nostalgic about a former partnership he once had back in WWE. And you know what? Luckily for Jericho, this former BFF is actually someone who currently works where he works, with that man being the big show Paul White, the man he once held the unified tag gold with, as Jericho in WWE in 2009. And now in 2023, it looks like Jericho may be due for a reunion of sorts if a recent trademark filing is anything to go by anyway. According to Fightful, Jericho is looking to claim the Jericho name for his own uses. Big show to the JAS confirmed. I mean, while this seems incredibly random, maybe 
there's an outside chance, just maybe we're going to see Big Show in a purple bucket hat very soon. I wouldn't mind. While many of AEW's roster are waiting for some concrete revolution plans, there is one man who knows what his March 5th plans entail, that being the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. While Danielson's immediate future involves an hour-long epic with AEW World Champion MJF, there are a few things that may in fact remain on his wrestling bucket list. One being high on many wrestling fans' wish list is for Brian to dip his toe in the New Japan waters just a little bit. And maybe, just maybe, compete in perhaps the ultimate showcase of wrestling ability in the world, the G1 Club. Climax. Now, considering the AEW and NJPW's current healthy relationship, this kind of seems this seems plausible, right? Plausible. And on the recent appearance on the In The Click podcast, AEW President Tony Khan addressed the possibility, saying that while he would love to see it, if he wins the AEW world title, it may prove difficult to pull off. He said, to be honest, I think it would be great in many ways, but Brian Danielson, it's quite possible, could be AEW world champion. I'm not sure he'll be able to get away from the show that much. I mean, well, a man can dream, and it doesn't make me move for MJF, but I mean, come on, MJF, do what's right. Do what's right. Win the match. Continuing with New Japan now, given Triple H's current thirst for signing talent, it's unsurprising that he may have had a gander across the shore to NJPW. Now, while much of the attention has gone on WWE's interest in Switchblade Jay White, and we'll get to that pretty soon, there has been another long-tenured New Japan star that has caught Trips' eyes, none other than Tama Tonga, the current holder of the Never Openweight Championship, beating the current WWE star, Carl Anderson, for the title back at Wrestle Kingdom 17, when Carl Anderson was working for WWE, but still went over to do the NJPW thing and then lost that title, and that was all the whole thing. And now Tonga has revealed that WWE's interest has been far from subtle or secret to him. Instead, Tonga says that WWE have been knocking hard at my door, which according to Tonga, he may in fact open up and say, hello. What do you want? Now, while Tonga may just be teasing us all, it has been reported that his current NJPW contract is in fact up soon. However, it's unclear how soon exactly. Now, Tonga's brother, Tangaloa, was once in WWE as Camacho. Remember him? Yet Tonga has never actually stepped through the WWE curtain, so perhaps 2023 we could see it happen as well as his Bullet Club affiliate, Jay White. I told you it was coming, it's coming right now. Because that's right, while Tonga has made WWE's interest no secret, it seems like Jay White has also been in the mood to feed us some little breadcrumbs regarding his future. Because in a recent interview with Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated, White spoke of the options on his table and how he feels about his next move. He said, so much is possible. Impact, AEW, WWE, we'll see. I'm at peace with it. I don't know if there is much more I could have done. I don't feel like I left a bunch of boxes unchecked. Reflecting on his time in Japan, now that it's over, White said, I've been living it, so it can be hard to appreciate it in the moment. But as I move on, I've started to look back at the weight some of it holds as time goes on. I hope people appreciate it even more. To me, I was doing what I was meant to be doing. Now I'm looking at what's next. He said, I can't go back to Japan, but there is nothing that says I can't compete at the shows in the United States. As White mentioned, Japan is no longer in his plans because he lost that Loser Leaves Japan match to Hiku Leo at the New Beginning event on January 22nd. However, despite that, New Japan shows in the US are a completely different thing altogether because White is scheduled to compete for NJPW's Battle in the Valley pay-per-view in San Jose, California tomorrow night, where he'll compete against the AEW's Eddie Kingston. Now, our two men did a bit of building to their match via a joint appearance on Wrestling Observer Live, where, as expected, things got a little bit heated between the pair. Now, along the squabbling, an agreement was in fact put in place for yet another high-stakes stipulation for both White and Kingston's NJPW futures. If White were to lose to Kingston, he would have to leave NJPW forever. And if Kingston were to lose, he would never wrestle an NJPW talent in an NJPW ring, instead needing to ask permission to White if he wanted to do so. So, I mean, it's high stakes yet again, particularly for Switchblade. Now, with White's NJPW contract reportedly up very soon, also according to Fightful, could this be the way that he is written off from the company for good? I mean, we don't have long to find out. It's a busy weekend for wrestling. Hey, before I go though, do me a favor, head on over to Cineworld's YouTube channel to watch me and Dan Layton react to the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania 4DX trailer. It's like being on a tiny roller coaster. It's a lot of fun. Just do it for me as a favor. Go on, for a friend. I'm moving house. I'm really busy this weekend. It just made my day. Please, thank you. Have a nice weekend. Coming up on today's show, we'll be taking you through all of the month's big releases, including Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. We'll be taking you on a date night to the 25th anniversary of Titanic. And see what happens when we watch the trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania in 4DX. Ooh.